Hi there, I am Dr. Rajita Vanga. Today's topic is anatomy of pharynx. So the pharynx is upper portion of gut tube. So the pharynx is a fibromuscular tube which is funnel in shape and this extends from the base of the skull to the inferior border of cricoid cartilage. So here is the sphenoid. which forms the base of the skull and it extends below till cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage of larynx. So it has got three parts, nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx. Nasopharynx is present behind the nasal cavity above the soft palate. So here is the soft palate. So the blue colored structure is the nasopharynx and it communicates with the nasal cavities through nasal coyane that is the posterior nasal apertures. So here is the nasal cavity. Oropharynx. Oropharynx extends between the soft palate above and superior border of epiglottis below. So here is, this is the epiglottis. So it extends till the superior border of epiglottis. The green colored structure is the oropharynx here and it communicates with the mouth through oropharyngeal isthmus. So here is the tongue and oral cavity. So it communicates with the oral cavity through oropharyngeal isthmus. Laryngopharynx. Laryngopharynx is also called hypopharynx and extends from the upper border of the epiglottis till the lower border of cricoid cartilage. So the purple colored structure what is shown here is the laryngopharynx which continues below with the esophagus. So it extends from the upper border of the epiglottis till the lower border of cricoid cartilage. Features of nasopharynx, nasopharyngeal tonsil or pharyngeal tonsil, it is the collection of lymphoid tissue beneath the mucous membrane at the junction of roof and the posterior wall of nasopharynx. So here we can see the collection of lymphoid structure below the sphenoid. So here is the sphenoidal air sinus. This is the sphenoid bone. So the roof, just uh, below the roof we can see the nasopharyngeal tonsil. This mucus diverticulum which is the bursa develops due to the addition of notochord to the dorsal wall of the pharyngeal part of foregut. So during embryology that is during development the notochord adheres to the dorsal wall of the pharyngeal part of foregut which results in the formation of this bursa. And sometimes a simple dimple is seen in the mucous membrane above the pharyngeal tonsil it represents the remains of Rathke's pouch. A craniopharyngioma may arise from this Rathke's pouch. Next important feature is orifice of pharyngotympanic tube or auditory tube or otherwise called as eustachian tube. So this lies on the lateral wall at the level of inferior nasal concha. 
so here is the opening of auditory tube or tubal opening so this uh, auditory tubal opening it is present at the level of inferior nasal concha so this is the cut part of inferior nasal concha and it lies almost 1 1.25 cm behind this inferior nasal concha the upper and the posterior margins of this opening is bounded by an elevation called as tubal elevation so you can see an elevation around it tubal elevation which is produced by the collection of lymphoid tissue called tubal tonsil two mucus uh, folds extends from this elevation next important feature is the salpingo pharyngeal fold which extends vertically downwards and fades into the wall of the pharynx so here is the so this salpingo pharyngeal fold contains salpingo pharyngeus muscle salpings means tube so it is a muscle attached to the uh, auditory tube that is the reason it is called salpingo pharyngeal fold containing salpingo pharyngeus muscle and salpingo palatine fold it extends downwards and forwards into the soft palate and it contains levator palatine muscle next is the pharyngeal recess it is a deep depression behind the tubal elevation and it is called pharyngeal recess or fossa of rosenmuller so posterior to the uh, tubal elevation the deep groove or depression whatever you are appreciating here is the fossa of rosenmuller structurally and functionally the nasopharynx resembles the nose and it is respiratory in function and lined by respiratory epithelium that is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium it walls are rigid and non collapsible to make the air passage patent an important clinical aspect associated with nasopharynx is adenoids so the nasopharyngeal tonsils are prominent in children up to the age of 6 years and they gradually undergo atrophy till puberty and almost completely disappear by the age of 20 so the nasopharyngeal tonsils when enlarged due to infection are known as adenoids and which block the posterior nares making mouth breathing obligatory so the affected children present features clinical features like uh, nasal obstruction uh, nasal discharge mouth breathing Uh, with protrusion of the tongue and toneless voice due to the absence of nasal tone and small nose epitaxis means nasal nose bleeding so these are the symptoms associated with the adenoids so infection from the pharynx can easily pass into the middle ear through pharyngo tympanic tube or the auditory tube so here is the image where the mucosa of the nasopharynx is removed exposing the deeper structures which is auditory tube and we can see salpingo pharyngeus muscle which makes a salpingo pharyngeal fold this is salpingo palatine muscle which contains levator valley palatine and muscle and here is the soft palate and the next important uh, feature is the nasopharyngeal isthmus or passivens ridge some fibers of uh, palatopharyngeus muscle arising from palatine aponeurosis 
sweep horizontally backwards and join the upper fibers of superior constrictor and to form a u shaped muscle loop in the posterior pharyngeal wall which is underneath the mucosa of posterior pharyngeal wall so here on each side you can see the superior constrictor so the muscle from the soft palate which sweeps with the, into the superior constrictor called as palatopharyngeus muscle which makes like a u shaped muscle loop in the posterior pharyngeal wall underneath the mucosa and which is pulled forward during uh, swallowing to make an elevation called as passivant ridge so regarding this passivant ridge uh, during swallowing that is uh, during deglutition the pharyngeal isthmus that is the opening between the free edges of the soft pa palate and the posterior wall of the nasopharynx is approximated is closed by the elevation of soft palate pulling forward of the posterior pharyngeal wall that is the passivant ridge so this u shaped muscle loop acts as a palatopharyngeal sphincter so because of this during the second phase of deglutition the nasal cavity is completely separated from oropharynx features seen in the oropharynx that is the lateral wall presents palatine tonsil so oropharynx is below the soft palate and above the epiglottis so you can see palatine tonsil which is present on the either side of the oropharynx and located into a triangular fossa which is called as tonsillar fossa and this tonsillar fossa is bounded anteriorly by palatoglossal arch and posteriorly by palatopharyngeal arch so this is the palatoglossal arch and here is so palatoglossal arch contain uh, it runs downwards forwards from so, uh, palate that is the soft palate to the lateral margin of the tongue and this arch uh, uh, contains palatoglossus muscle so palatoglossal arch if you remove the mucosa we can see the palatoglossus muscle next regarding the palatopharyngeal arch which runs downwards and backwards into the pharyngeal wall and where it fades out fades out along with the pharyngeal wall so palatopharyngeal arch contains palatopharyngeus muscle palatopharyngeus muscle helps in the formation of passivant ridge so in this image we can appreciate palatoglossus and palatopharyngeus muscle so after removing the mucosa we can see the palatoglossus muscle which is towards the tongue and this is the tonsillar fossa which is between these two arches and this one is the palatopharyngeus muscle and we can see the blood vessels and nerves forming the tonsillar bed structure anterior wall of the oropharynx presents lingual tonsil formed by numerous nodules of lymphoid tissue underneath the mucosa lining the pharyngeal part of dorsum of the tongue so anteriorly we saw the lingual tonsil forming the anterior uh, wall that is the anterior wall of the oropharynx and also the upper free end of epiglottis behind the tongue
and also median and lateral glossoepiglottic folds connecting the anterior surface and the edges of the epiglottis respectively to the tongue. So, median is the middle one. So, this fold is the median glossoepiglottic fold. and which are present on the either side between the is the lateral glossoepiglottic folds. Next is the epiglottic vallicula that is the shallow fossae between the median and lateral glossoepiglottic folds is called as epiglottic valliculae. So, here the depressions between the median and lateral glossoepiglottic folds between the tongue and the epiglottis, the gap is called as epiglottic valliculae. Now take a look over the features seen in the laryngopharynx. So anterior wall presents laryngeal inlet and below the inlet it is supported by cricoid and arytenoid cartilage. So anterior wall of laryngopharynx, we know the laryngopharynx extends from the upper border of epiglottis. Fill the lower border of cricoid cartilage. So, it presents a laryngopharynx that is behind the larynx, the pharyngeal part is called as laryngopharynx. Anterior wall is formed by the inlet of larynx. So, this is the inlet. and it is supported by cricoid and arytenoid cartilages. Repeat, the lateral wall presents the piriform fossa on each side of the laryngeal inlet. The piriform fossa is described as a deep recess, means a deep uh, depression which is pyramidal shaped where it is broad above and narrow below. And in the anterior part of lateral wall of laryngopharynx present on each side of laryngeal inlet. These recesses are produced due to bulging of larynx into the laryngopharynx. So, medially it is bonded by aryepiglottic fold and quadrangular membrane of larynx. Laterally it is bonded by mucous membrane covering the medial surface of lamina of thyroid cartilage and thyrohyoid membrane. And the internal laryngeal uh, nerve and superior laryngeal vessels present in this uh, fossa. The internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels pierce the thyrohyoid membrane and traverse underneath the mucous membrane of the floor of piriform fossa to reach its medial wall. Above the piriform fossa is separated from the epiglottic velliculae by lateral glossoepiglottic fold. The piriform fossa is, a, is deep in uh, ruminating animals in which it acts as a lateral foot channel to convey the bolus of food during deglutition by the side of closed laryngeal inlet. It is sometimes artificially deepened by smugglers using uh, lead balls to uh, hide the precious materials such as diamonds. For this reason, the piriform fossa is also called as smuggler's fossa. The piriform fossa is a dangerous site for perforation by an endoscope because the floor of it, it contains internal laryngeal nerve. The ingested foreign bodies, for example, fish bones, uh, safety pins are sometimes lodged into the piriform fossa. If care is not taken, the removal of foreign bodies may damage the internal laryngeal nerve leading to anesthesia in the supraglottic part of larynx. So, the wall of pharynx consists of four layers from within outwards, mucous membrane that is the mucous coat and outer to the mucous membrane is pharyngobasilar fascia which is formed by pharyngeal aponeurosis. Then outer to it is the muscular coat called as pharyngeal muscles and outermost is the pharyngobasilar fascia which contains loose areolar sheath. Mucous membrane or mucous coat the mucous membrane lining the pharynx contains a considerable amount of elastic tissue. 
and is continuous with the mucus lining of protective cuff reflex. Eustachian tubes, nasal cavities, mouth, larynx and esophagus, they are all lined by the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium except in the region of nasopharynx where it is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium that is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium which is a respiratory epithelium. And there are many subendothelial collections of lymphoid tissues around the commencement of food and the air passages into which the epithelium tends to invaginate uh, in the form of a narrow cleft called as crepes. And these collections of lymphoid tissue form pharyngeal and tubal tonsils in the nasopharynx and the palatine and lingual tonsils in the oropharynx. The next layer is the pharyngobacillar fascia. It is a fibrous thickening of the submucosa and it lines the muscular coat and it is thick near the base of the skull but thin and indistinct inferiorly. Pharyngobacillar fascia is the thickest in the upper part where it fills the gap between the upper border of the superior constrictor and base of the skull. So this gap is called filled with the pharyngobacillar fascia. Next regarding the muscular coat. The muscular coat contains two layers of striated muscles. The outer layer comprises three pairs of circular muscles called as constrictors. The inner layer comprises of three pairs of longitudinal muscles. The deeper most is the buccopharyngeal fascia. It is inconspicuous means it is not clear which covers the inner surface of the constrictors. And in the upper part, it is also pro prolonged for forwards to cover the buccinator muscles, hence the name buccopharyngeal fascia. And above the upper border of the superior constrictor, buccopharyngeal fascia blends with pharyngobacillar fascia. Valdeus ring, the aggregations of lymphoid tissue underneath the epithelial lining of the pharyngeal walls called as tonsils which surround the commencement of air and foot passages. These aggregations together constitute an uninterrupted circle called as Valdeus ring, which forms a special feature of interior of pharynx. So now let us discuss about the muscles of pharynx. Uh, there are three pairs of constrictors which are circularly running muscles and three pairs of longitudinally running muscles. So the three constrictor muscles of pharynx which forms the external layer are superior, middle and inferior constrictors. So these constrictors are arranged like a flower pot without base placed one above the other open in front uh, for communication. So here is the posterior view of the uh, pharynx where we can see the three constrictors and this image shows the anterior view of the pharynx where they open up anteriorly and communicate with the nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx. So here is the nasopharyngeal isthmus. And the lingual tonsils are here. So this is the oropharyngeal isthmus and this inlet of larynx which is a laryngopharyngeal isthmus. So anteriorly it is like an open tube and posteriorly all will approximate with each other and overlap one over the other like a flower pot and making it closed on the posterior aspect. The constrictor muscles form bulk of the muscular coat of pharyngeal wall and they arise in front from the margins of uh, posterior openings of nasal, oral and laryngeal cavities. The fibers pass backwards uh, in a fan shaped manner into the lateral and posterior walls of the pharynx and to be inserted into the median fibrous roughy 
on the posterior aspect of the pharynx. So, this white line is the posterior median raphe. Where we can see the three constrictors merge posteriorly forming the posterior median raphe. So, extending from the base of the skull that is pharyngeal tubercle of occipital bone. So, here is the pharyngeal tubercle. Pharyngeal, pharyngeal tubercle is an elevation seen in the occipital bone and till below till the esophagus. Next is the pharyngeal pouch also known as Zenker's diverticulum. Pharyngeal pouch is otherwise called Zenker's diverticulum. Inferior constrictor muscle has two parts, thyropharynges and cricopharynges. Thyropharynges made up of oblique fibers and cricopharynges made up of transverse fibers. So, here is the inferior constrictor. These oblique fibers are thyropharynges. And we can appreciate one side it is the open pharynx posteriorly, the other side it is the closed one and here is the cricopharynges. So, the potential gap between the posteriorly between this thyro and cricopharynges is called as pharyngeal dimple or Kelly and dehiscence. So, this gap So, the mucosa and submucosa of the pharynx may bulge through this weak area to form a pharyngeal pouch or diverticulum. The formation of pharyngeal pouch in this region of Kelly and dehiscence is attributed to the neuromascular incoordination in this region which may be because uh, the two parts of the inferior constrictor have different nerve supply. So, thyropharynges and cricopharynges have got a different nerve supply and gap between them is the Kelly and dehiscence which is the weaker part of the pharynx and this weaker part may form a pharyngeal pouch or diverticulum and this leads to neuromuscular incoordination, neuromuscular incoordination. So, the propulsive thyropharynges is supplied by pharyngeal plexus and sphincteric cricopharynges is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve. So, in a case of neuromuscular incoordination, the cricopharynges may fail to relax while the thyropharynges contracts. So, the bolus of foot may get pushed backwards and tend to produce a diverticulum. So, through this weak area, the mucosa and submucosa of the pharynx bulge to form a pharyngeal pouch which is otherwise called as Zenker's diverticulum. The gaps in the pharyngeal wall, there are four gaps exist on either side of the pharyngeal wall in relation to constrictor muscles. The gaps and the, uh, the structures uh, in the gap which are passing through the gap I will enlist now. So, the first uh, gap is between the base of the skull and upper concave border of superior constrictor. So, here is the base of the skull. And here is the superior constrictor. So, the gap between them is termed as sinus of Morgagni. So, structures passing through the sinus of Morgagni are the auditory tube. So, the blue color structure is the auditory tube. 
along with it levator palate muscle ascending uh, palatine artery then palatine branch of ascending pharyngeal artery so these are the structures passing through the sinus of morgagni between superior and middle constrictors the structures passing through are the stylopharyngeus muscle and glossopharyngeal nerve between middle and the inferior constrictor the structures passing through are the internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels between the lower border of the inferior constrictor and the esophagus that is in the tracheoesophageal groove the structures which are passing through this gap are the recurrent laryngeal nerve and inferior laryngeal vessels pharyngeal lesions may irritate the glossopharyngeal nerve and vagus nerves the pain is referred to the ear because these nerves contribute sensory innervation to external ear as well so the gaps in the pharyngeal wall have some structures passing through them so that is about uh, the gaps and also the structures passing through the gaps now let's see the longitudinally running muscles longitudinal muscles which forms the internal layer of a muscular coat so these muscles run longitudinally from above downwards to form a longitudinal muscle coat so the first muscle which i'm going to discuss is palatopharyngeus muscle palatopharyngeus muscle gains its origin from hard palate and palatine aponeurosis so here this is the soft palate and we can see the hard palate as well so the muscle which is emerging out from this soft palate is palatopharyngeus so palatopharyngeus gains its origin from hard palate and palatine aponeurosis and insertion a uh, posterior border of the lamina of thyroid cartilage and side of the pharynx and esophagus so finally it inserts into the posterior lamina of thyroid cartilage so thyroid cartilage is here we can see the fibers are towards partly into the posterior lamina of thyroid cartilage and partly inserts into the side of pharynx and esophagus nerve supply of this palatopharyngeus it is supplied by pharyngeal branch of vagus that is the 10th cranial nerve which forms the pharyngeal plexus action of this one is to elevate that is shorten and widen pharynx and larynx during swallowing and speaking next muscle is salpingopharyngeus so salpingopharyngeus is from the auditory tube so this is the auditory tube so the muscle gaining origin from the auditory tube is salpingopharynx so salpingopharynx uh, gains its origin from the cartilaginous part of uh, pharyngotympanic tube or auditory tube and it inserts by blending with the palatopharyngeus muscle and nerve supply is same as palatopharyngeus muscle which is supplied by pharyngeal branches and pharyngeal plexus so pharyngeal branch is a branch of vagus that is the 10th cranial nerve and action is also similar to palatopharyngeus muscle it elevates the pharynx and larynx during swallowing and sweep, speaking the next muscle is the stylopharyngeus muscle stylopharyngeus muscle gets origin from styloid process of temporal bone so here is the styloid process of temporal bone and this muscle is the stylopharyngeus muscle so stylopharyngeus uh, muscle inserts into posterior and superior border of thyroid cartilage and palatopharyngeus muscle so we can see the part of stylopharyngeus so part of uh, stylopharyngeus inserting into the thyroid cartilage 
and partly it inserts into the palatopharyngeus muscle. And nerve supply of stylopharyngeus is by glossopharyngeal ninth cranial nerve and action is similar to that of palatopharyngeus and salpingopharyngeus muscle. It helps in the elevation of the pharynx and larynx during swallowing and speaking. Blood supply and nerve supply of uh, pharynx, arterial supply, ascending pharyngeal artery, ascending palatine branch of facial artery. So ascending pharyngeal artery is a branch of external carotid artery. So here is the common carotid which terminally divides into external carotid artery. Here is the internal carotid artery and the direct branch from the external carotid supplying the pharynx is the pharyngeal branch. ascending pharyngeal artery then ascending palatine which is a branch of facial so this is the facial artery arising from external carotid which gives rise to ascending palatine branches and also descending palatine arteries and pharyngeal branches of maxillary artery. So external carotid artery terminally divides into maxillary artery and superficial temporal arteries. So you can see the maxillary artery here. So maxillary artery gives rise to some palatine branches and pharyngeal branches and branches of superior and inferior thyroid arteries as well. Superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid artery. Superior thyroid artery and inferior thyroid artery is a branch of thyrocervical trunk which is in turn a branch of subclavian artery. Nerve supply, the pharyngeal plexus forms the basic nerve supply to the pharynx so pharyngeal plexus are present in the middle of the pharyngeal constrictor and it is contributed by the pharyngeal branches of glossopharyngeal that is the ninth cranial nerve. And also the pharyngeal branches from 10th cranial nerve called as vagus. And it also receives the sympathetic branches from superior cervical ganglion. And its glossopharyngeal component supplies the sensory fibers to the pharyngeal mucosa. And vagus accessory complex means the complex formed between the 10th cranial vagus and 11th cranial spinal accessory. So the cranial accessory nerve fibers from the nucleus ambiguous are carried by vagal branches to supply the most of the muscles of palate, pharynx and larynx. Then cranial accessory fibers carried by the vagal branches supply most of the muscles of palate except stylopharynges which, sub, which is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. So, stylopharyngeus is the only muscle supplied by ninth cranial glossopharyngeal nerve. Rest of all the muscles are supplied by vagal and accessory uh, nerves that is vagus accessory complex. Next regarding the retropharyngeal space, it is the potential space between the buccopharyngeal fascia and prevertebral fascia extending from the base of the skull to the superior mediastinum. So the gap between the pharynx and the vertebra that is uh, buccopharyngeal fascia the fascia covering the pharynx and prevertebral fascia the fascia covering the vertebra. So this gap is termed as retropharyngeal space.
So this space uh, from the base of the skull it extends almost into the superior mediastinum of thorax and it permits the movement of pharynx, larynx, trachea and esophagus during swallowing. So this completes all about the pharynx. Thank you.